And uh, next, I want to talk about a little bit of specifics when it comes to importing and using a module in your program. Now, we've already talked about this top one, and, and I think we actually mentioned this one briefly, but I want to remind you of it. There's two kind of different ways to do this. But what this says on this top one, import random, what that means is import everything from random. I want the whole module. That gives you everything. And that's not always a bad choice. In fact, when you're doing initial development, it's it allows you a lot of flexibility and it gives you access to all the members of random. And then I, when I use that, when I want to use something from the random module, of course, I'm going to type random dot whatever I want to use. So I use the dot notation to use a function or a method from the random module. The second way, of course, is to import only the thing that I want to use. And if I do this, then I no longer have to use dot notation. So I can just call it as if it's a regular function and use it that way. That's a good time saver. You need to be careful though, because you could run into what are called name conflicts. If you import this, um, you also may have a variable or another object in your, in your code called choice, and then you're gonna have some issues. So you wanna be careful and really pay attention to what you're using. Using dot notation, you're avoiding name conflicts because there won't be another random dot choice. Yeah. Are you able to modules inside functions? Modules, you can you can use things from modules inside a function, but you're going to import them into your main script. Everything that you import will be available inside a function. Yes. Yeah. You always want to do your imports first top line. So let's take a look really quick at this. So import random gives me everything from random. So I can go print random dot random 110, just like that, just like we've talked about. That's fine. Okay. I can use it that way. The occasion where I might want to just import choice is if I'm writing a really big program and it was kind of a memory hog and I was trying to like, how can I cut down on the amount of memory that this program is using? I might just import the things that I need. Once I get it all figured out what I want to use and everything, then I can go back and I can say uh, from random import choice. Okay. And then I'm going to go rand in so I don't have to do as much work. Rand in, there we go. Okay, so then I would call that just like this. Now, if I have another variable, maybe called rand in, or I have another module that has a rand in, then I can rename that mod that that and call it that way. So I am saying from random, import randint, and from now on, instead of calling it that way, we're gonna call it using RA, just like I did here, which has the same effect. And I can literally name this whatever I want, uh, although I don't recommend it, right? because that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it still works. That's a strong case for just because you can doesn't mean you should. Um, but the from, the from syntax only imports the modules that you need. It keeps things simple, it keeps things clean, it uses less memory. So that's a, a thing that you might wanna remember uh, because some some uh, modules are actually quite large. So I'm gonna show you really quick how to install a package 
in PyCharm that allows you to, to have access to additional modules. Because there's a bunch of them out there, but knowing how to install them is important. So down at the bottom of the window here in PyCharm, I'm going to click on the thing that says Python Packages. And it'll give you a huge list of what's installed here, right? If you start searching, it'll, it'll reduce that list. But there's one kind of fun one that I wanted to show you about. And it's called the emoji package. Now this one I already have installed on my computer, but if you click on something that hasn't been installed yet as a package, you'll have a little install button right here. If you click that button, it'll install the package and then you can begin using it. The other great thing about this packages a uh, little module here is it actually shows you some example code for how to use it. So uh, you can you can start using it right away. So if I want to import emoji now that I've got it, and when you when you when you add the package, when you click install, it'll give you a little message saying whether it was successful or not. Most of the time it just works. It's using something called pip, which is a, a Python installer program. Uh, and it usually takes care of things for you. It's pretty convenient about that. So this is using somebody else's packages that have been uh, have been made available publicly. But we have this emoji one. And so Um, so if I want to emojize something, that's the method of the emoji module. I can use emoji.emojize, and then I give it a string, and inside that string, I'm going to put the name of the emoji that I want to use in a set of colons. And it will take whatever that is and it will replace it for me. So if I, if I run that, I get emoji. I just changed the whole outlook of this class for you all. Now you can do everything in emoji. I think that's a great plan. Um, yeah, why not? Uh, I think I'll just refer to my earlier comment, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Uh, so uh, if you want to know what the codes are, if you don't know the, the official name for all of the emoji, if you go Python,